here in Manila, of all places, hanging out with an old friend, Tony, who we met, I think, at least three to four years ago in Bandung. Yes. Uh, you know, while, while waiting for you, I was reflecting on the kind of conversations that we had. Mm. So, so uh, you know, the last three years we've seen each other twice. Mm. One in Bandung and one when I was in Hong Kong. Yes. Um, I remember vividly uh, the speech that you gave mm. about Singapore versus Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, and I remember, you know, being extremely intrigued by how you mentioned about you find uh, more uh, relevance or, or, you know, feel more at home being in Hong Kong mm. as opposed f to being in Budapest. Mm. So let, let's start with Hong Kong. Yes. Um, why did you move there? Wow. How long ago it's, was it? It's, it's, a, it's been a while, like mm -hmm. nine years ago. It was the time when I, when I actually facilitated my move, but it started 10 years ago and in 2011 May, I think 14th, I actually made the move. It was for a list of reasons, but I was in love with someone and uh, that was a catalyst. <laughs> Yeah, she was an amazing lady. So love. She was, I always did everything for love and adventure before I turned 30. And I became intentional uh, when I turned 30. So, but, but you stayed on? Yes, I stayed on because mm -hmm. for love. I, I, right. I deeply love Hong Kong. I also had a commitment before that uh, before I turned 30, I would do as many things and live in as many places as possible. And Hong Kong was my city number 10, including Budapest, where I was right. born. And uh, I had the opportunity to actually move to Shanghai before I was 30. Mm -hmm. But I was so much in love with Hong Kong. It was so much the right place for me to be that I stayed. Well, one of the things that I remember you saying was, you know, the, the kind of entrepreneurial spirit. Yes. It's something that you can't find in Hungary. Yes. And you feel a sense of belonging being a white man in Hong Kong, which, yes. which I didn't quite comprehend. <laughs> so can you can you uh, elaborate on that? Well, you know, Hong Kong Hong Kong is a is a colonial, it's a former colonial uh, uh, situation. So I think being being a white man or, or a Westerner or, uh -huh. or a bit different uh, uh -huh. from from the indigenous population right. in Hong Kong has a very long history. So I never felt out of place. In, mm -hmm. in Hong Kong, uh, I really enjoyed most importantly how welcoming the city was, and every single person in the city were welcoming mm -hmm. uh, to me. And, and the more important thing is the frequency. Yes, you know, and the energy you are in the same way. Yes. Like they yes. understand you yes. and vice versa. Yes, that's how I felt. You know, <laughs> and I think one of the one of the reasons here, uh, Hong Kong has been scoring highest on the global ranking for twenty five years in a row. Mm -hmm. on the f being the freest economy in the world mm -hmm. and it is free you can basically do whatever you want and no one is judging you as long as you keep within certain boundaries right. but the boundaries are very very broad you know? if you don't cross the red line mm -hmm. then you're fine you can say do whatever you want as long as you're respectful as long as you're respectful to other people so it turns out that my business ethic mm -hmm. and my approach to life is very similar to the one that somehow got established in Hong Kong. Very strange place. You know, it was established on drug trading, if you, if you right. consider it. It was, it was born out of the first opium war. Mm -hmm. And it was born out of uh, pirates' interest uh, to control trade and sell drugs. <laughs> But of course, the British empires and the, and the Chinese empires' uh, interests were clashing there, more importantly. It's just a fun fact. And somehow you can sense it. You, you seem to have, you know, interest in, in finding out fun facts about every other city. That That's true. That's world. true. I'm, I'm trying to. I, I really enjoy history. Oh. And I do think history is very important in driving the present. Is it actually holds all the answers for present problems and give a hint into the solutions in, in the future. Now, let, let's talk about recent history. Um, in March 2019, yes. Hong Kong TV interviewed you. Yes. And there's a title that says, Why am I bullish about Hong Kong? Yes. Which you have answered the same question the same way. Today. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, would you would you have answered exactly I'm, the same way? I'm, I'm not <laughs> Are sure. Are you still bullish? <laughs> uh, I mean, having you know, March twenty nineteen yes. is vastly different from your your right your now. Correct. I mean, uh, your I, I'm sure it hurts you uh, for being such a big fan of Hong Kong. Yes. Uh, of uh, of the, the series of incidents that just yes. happened in the last nine months. Now. Yes. Uh, from a certain perspective, uh, I would answer the same, and I will give you that in a second. I'm surprised. And of course, it's been it's been hurting uh, mm -hmm. to see what's been going on, and um, and I think right now, as we're sitting here, twenty twenty mm -hmm. February six seventh six right. <laughs> I think it's a six. Um, the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, uh, epidemic yep. uh, has been unfolding, we can say globally, yep. uh, but most importantly, of course, in mainland China, yep. since Hong Kong is so uh, yeah. attached mm -hmm. to to the mainland Chinese realities, Hong Kong is extra affected. There is a trouble ban uh, in the Philippines, where we're sitting right now, yep. from Hong Kong, Macau, and mainland China. Uh, there was one death case in Hong Kong uh, in the wake of the virus mm -hmm. and we still don't know how this is going to unfold. Uh, unfold. Now, the reason why this is extremely important in the case of Hong Kong is because the protest situation mm -hmm. of last year was already making a bigger impact on the local economy than the SARS uh, in 2003 had on the city's economy. The last quarter of 2019 had a contraction of 3% uh, of GDP, such as the Q3 had, uh, which is a major impact on the economy. And now we have the virus, which has a bigger, bigger, bigger death toll in China than SARS had, and might have a bigger impact on the local economy in Hong Kong than SARS had. Now, compound these two uh, situations, Very it is, extremely unfortunate. Now, if had it been only the protest situation and had there been an, an, you know, a, an outcome from the government, an answer from the government or the private sector, you know, from, from the ecosystem, I would be still you know, bullish. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a bit depressed, such as everyone, just mm -hmm. like everyone else in Hong Kong, that we had that and we have this and we don't know what's coming. Uh, so it will be a major impact on the Hong Kong economy. A. Mm -hmm. So I cannot be as bullish shorter. Mm -hmm. um, am I committed to Hong Kong? I'm 100% committed. I just talked to one of the biggest companies in Hong Kong this morning, just before our in interview and conversation, that, that we are going to do our bit to bring business and, and life and energy back to the Hong Kong but business. It's a very difficult service. It is. But not if you consider what I said last year and what I will say now again. Can you repeat what you say? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> whatever made Hong Kong special and whatever made Hong Kong uh, great as mm -hmm. a place to do business and as a great place to do business in China or for Chinese companies to do business globally, those factors are still there. So as long as there will be business between China and the rest of the world, Hong Kong will enjoy very special place in that ecosystem, in that value chain, in that business flow, whether it's trade, finance, investment, and ideally innovation, obviously I'm working towards that. Um, and that's not going to change. Whether it will grow as fast as it could, maybe not. But Hong Kong is already one of the richest cities in the world. It doesn't so it have, can afford it. It doesn't have to grow that 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 far and that fast. And I don't think the problem of Hong Kong is, is whether it's rich or not GDP-wise. The problem of Hong Kong is that it's uh, the most unequal society in the world.